Now, the FBI has successfully accessed data on an iPhone belonging to one of these San Bernardino attackers without Apple's help. The US Justice Department has now dropped its court order against the tech firm which had refused to hack the device. Let's get some reaction to that um, with uh, blogger and technology journalist Kate Bevan. Hello to you, Kate. Um, is this good or bad for Apple? I can't decide. It's good for Apple in that they've kind of won their PR battle and they haven't had to go to court and they haven't had to crack into the phone for the FBI. It's a good PR win for them, put it that way. However, however, their phone's been hacked. Their phone's been hacked. We don't know how that's been done. It could be a hardware hack. It could have been done going through the iCloud data that was stored via the phone. We don't know how it's been done. And I think it's really important that we do find out how that's done. And of course, if we do find out how that's done, then Apple will doubtless push out a security patch to fix that, so thereby thwarting any future attempts to do the same thing. But up until now they've tried to suggest that they are unhackable, although haven't we seen recently, apart from this particular instance, that they were on the verge of being I don't hacked. think any device is unhackable. I mean, you just have to look at the number of security exploits that get recorded every day. And in Apple's case in particular, you think back to the iCloud hack when the photographs of various celebrities were stolen from iCloud and then were spread all over the web. Nothing is unhackable. The case is, what, what do you do to stop that happening? What steps can you take? Uh, and up until now, they seem to have been much more effective than Windows. Well, not necessarily. Um, you know, as I say, any device is unhackable, and it's, a lot of it's down to how securely your stuff is stored in the cloud, how your data is protected there. We don't know how this has been hacked, and certainly Apple's devices are much better at anti-hacking since they've introduced the biometric, i.e. the thumbprint uh, security thing. And you're seeing that coming in other devices as well. It's on Android devices, it's on Windows devices too. So as an Apple user, what, uh, how should you be feeling about events this afternoon and what should you do if anything to try to make sure that your data is as protected as it can be? I think Apple users should be pleased that um, this has happened, that uh, Apple hasn't had to hand over the phone and haven't, hasn't had to hack it on behalf of the FBI. So they've got the moral high ground as They've got the moral concerned. high ground. I mean, that said, I always thought that they should have helped the FBI because I think it was a legitimate request. And also the phone didn't actually belong to the, to the shooter himself. It was, as far as I'm aware, it was, it was a, a work, work phone, phone wasn't it? and the, the, his work had given permission to try and hack it. Hack it's probably the wrong word, actually. Get, get the, get the data in it. Access. That's a good way of putting <laughs> yeah. it, yeah. So um, I think Apple users and actually all tech users should be pleased that this particular one has been resisted. Having said that, it was an awful lot of grandstanding by the tech companies because sometimes there are legitimate reasons to want to get at somebody's data. I mean, if you think of it like um, a search warrant, if if they've got a search warrant to, your, to search your house, if you don't open the door for them, they'll break the door down. Um, there's usually usually, sometimes, often a legitimate reason for doing so. The question is the tension between protecting users' data and making stuff available to law enforcement authorities if it's actually required. And what was the problem? I've got an iPhone here. I just happened to... Here's the, obviously you just happen other to phones <laughs> are available. Um, is, it the, is it the... I'm just making sure there's nothing on there that I... No, that's fine. <laughs> so is it the fact that you put your finger on it and, uh, and it does the, the check for your fingerprint? Well, or the, is it the when you, you swipe it and then I nearly did it, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> what your code is. Well, it depends on the, the make of the phone. This was an old iPhone. I think it was an iPhone C that didn't have the thumbprint protection. Right. So it was a case of brute forcing uh, the, the four digit or maybe the six digit code. Maybe they just guessed right. Maybe they just <laughs> guessed right. Who knows? I mean, yeah, if you know something about somebody, a bit of social engineering can often reveal what that code is. But on this case, it, it's about that was an older phone, so they didn't have to get past a biometric thing. They just had to get past the, the, the four digit code. We don't know how they've done that. Okay, but, but they have. But they have, and it means that they'll be able to possibly be able to do it in the future, and hopefully Apple will be able to push out a fix for it. I mean, I think it's important that we've had this conversation about law enforcement access to digital, uh, digital stuff, because sometimes it's important. Other times you don't want hackers getting at your stuff, so there's the tension. What now? Just while I've got you, what's this new patch that I'm having to download? Oh, that's because there's been um, a problem with the latest update to iOS, which has caused problems with opening links, both from Safari, from other brands, Browsers like Chrome and also for Maps. I think they're pushing out a fix of that today, but it's been pretty tiresome, I think, for iPhone users. Yeah, it's asking me to download it. Yeah. I think I'll wait. Uh, oh, download it because it'll stop. At the moment, if you've been trying to get into a link from Safari, you probably haven't been able to. Oh, okay. So there you go. Thank you very much indeed <laughs> for the advice. It's great to talk to you as always. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.